is going on, y'all? Jason and Miss Brooke, aka Mrs. Cog Hill, over here at Cog Hill Farm. Hope you guys are having a blessed day. We're about to go do the chores this morning. That's right. Feed the farm. Feed the farm. And I tell you what, we'll split off. You go ahead to the barn and I'm going to head this way and take care of this side okay. and I'll meet you at the barn. How about that? Sounds like a deal. All right. I got some, some things to do along the way. So <laughs> Dee Dee and I'll meet you there. That'll work and Holly's found her, a, she's found her a stick. Oh, oh Holly. Goodness. Come on girl, let's go. Good morning, Scott. How you doing, buddy? How you doing? You doing? I'm going to come get y'all in just a second. Let me get the, uh, the honeymooners taken care of first thing this morning, bud. Okay. Good morning, good morning, good morning, honey mooners. We have three pigs on our farm, and two of them live together, the honey mooners. Of course, that's Gus and Loretta right here. Now, Loretta is a rescue. She came from a hard, 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 or a bad, bad situation. And luckily, some friends of ours rescued her and gifted her to us. So we got Gus and Loretta here, who I like to call the honeymooners and they are a mess. And a mess being characters. Hey girl, what's going on Loretta? You doing okay? Forgot to mention, Loretta is also deaf. So she pretty much can't hear anything I say, but she can definitely see me. Hey baby, hey baby. What's going on Gus Bus? How you doing sir? Y'all ready for some feed? Yeah. All of our animals get specific feed depending on what type or breed of animal they are. Okay, get down, get down. I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you. Let me wet your feed first though. If you notice how vocal Loretta is, uh, <laughs> I think it's because she can't hear, I really do. Gus is not that vocal. Only thing Gus is loud at is that he's a big snore. I hear Gus snoring. Listen. Listen y'all, listen. You can hear Gus snoring, oh my gracious, all over the farm. Y'all come on. We wet the pig's feed because it just makes it easier for them to digest it. And that was uh, a tip given to us by our vet. There y'all go. Also, you'll see later Peaches, our other pig here on the farm, who's a pot belly pig. These guys are Cooney Coonies. Peaches uh, has a, a little more steps of getting her feed ready, but they all get their feed wetted and a children's vitamin. All right, guys, here y'all go. There you go, Gus, there's your vitamin. Here you go, Loretta. Here you go, baby. There you go, good girl. Good morning, boys. How y'all doing this morning? Huh? How y'all doing? So these are our bucks, our boy goats. These are the only boy goats that can breed here on our farm. And we keep them separated from our female goats, which we'll show y'all here in just a minute. Uh, because, you know, we don't want them breeding all the time. We want to control when they breed. So these are our boy goats, Mr. Mo and Mr. Joe, also known as Stink and Stank or sometimes stank and stunk. What's going on guys? Let's get y'all fixed up. Now our boy goats get a feed that is specific for bucks. Here you guys go. Here you go, Mo. Here you go, buddy. Here you go, big Mo. Come on, you gotta step this way. Here y'all go. There y'all go right there. Joe and Mo are both Nubians, which is a dairy breed. Joe is a big boy. He is a big, big goat. Mo is, uh, Mo's, he just turned one, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Joe, on the other hand, he's about four. And all of our babies that you'll see over in the barn are Joe's babies. Now, these guys are not related whatsoever, and that's why we have two bucks that way we're not interbreeding 
with any females here. They will be separate genetics. And the main reason that we do breed our goats is because of goat's milk. All right, so if you don't know, male goats, bucks, have an odor about them. And it's a real musky odor that, that they got scent glands, and that's kind of where it comes from. Also, some of it comes from because they see their beards they got. Another thing they do to try to swoon the ladies is that they will do number one on their face and beard. And the only way I can, um, and it's oily because of the scent glands, if you've ever been around a ferret and that musky odor that a ferret has, it's kind of similar. It's not 100% like that, but it's fairly similar to what a ferret smells like. And it's really strong. It's not putrid or anything like that, but it is sort of unpleasant if you don't like that smell. And if you get it on you, you gotta wear it off because it is oily. It kind of sticks on you for a while. Usually when we have to trim hooves and all that, I put me like a, uh, I got a, a, like a disposable jumpsuit and I'll put that on because you have to wash your clothes a couple of times <laughs> to get the smell out. All right, over here in our first pasture right here, this is our daughter, Mary Carl's pasture. This is where all of her pigeons are, all of her birds, all of her things. And she wants to remain private and not be on camera anymore. So I wanna show y'all what we got going over here other than her pigeons, which stay in this aviary right here that we built. Uh, we have some other animals over here that she handles. And that is some ducks, some, uh, a, a couple of chickens, and of course, our beautiful peacocks. Not to mention my main man, Thomas, right here. What's going on, Tommy? Hey, buddy. How you doing this morning, sir? You can see there's one of our Muscovies. Y'all can see right there, that's Bandit, that little chicken right there. She's a frizzle, and she has hatched out a little baby. There it is. Y'all see the little baby? Where'd he go? He was just right there. Where'd your little baby go? Hmm? And here's one of her call ducks. If y'all look right here, you can see a couple more male Muscovies. And that is cantaloupe right there. That's one of our oldest geese. Does not like to hang out with the other geese. There's one of the men in black back there. Y'all see that? He's going to the ultimate pig waller back there with the sunshade. But that's cantaloupe. He is a Sebastopol goose that has all those pretty curly feathers. But cantaloupe is an old man. Uh, he's probably around eight or nine years old. All right, big Tommy. Oh, there's the little chick. I am not gonna hurt you. Um, tell him, Tommy, we're not gonna hurt him, are we, buddy? No, we are not gonna hurt you. Scott is shedding his tail feathers. Y'all see that? Peacocks in the fall months will lose their tail feathers and come spring, he will grow them back. And generally, it'll get bigger and bigger and bigger every year and, and to a point. It's gonna stop eventually. Oh, there's the men in black. That's our Indian runner uh, ducks right there. They've been here a long time too. Now these Indian runners right here, they are just a couple of years old, but the men in black, you can see them running right there. They look like little bowling pins. He's been here and his buddy or brother They've been here a good minute. Hey, Booth. Y'all can see why we call her Booth. There's his brother. Speaking of aviary, here I am in Mary Carl's aviary. Her, it's really two, it's split. Two, two sections to it, or two rooms basically to it. This one houses all her fancy pigeons, which have just gone inside the, the loft here. That we were all out till I came in here. And right behind me, is where the Victorian crown pigeons stay and all of her pretty doves. <laughs> that one dove that laughs, I tell you what, that thing tickles me every time. All right, let's go take care of our egg laying chickens over here in the egg mobile. For those that might be wondering, we are a no kill farm. All of our animals here are pets, but they also do play a role in our farm. We do a ton of gardening. gardening. We do some market gardening along with a flower farm. So our animals play a part, and I'll show you what the chickens really do here. But all the manure we collect and turn it into rich compost. So this front pasture right here where I'm about to go, this is our main 
garden area right now. We are planning a new garden space in the back behind our house. But this right here is our main garden area, it has been since we moved here. And you'll see what the chickens do for us over here. As you can see right here, this spot right here is where the chickens were previously. And we just moved them uh, earlier this week to where they are now in that location. But look what they did to this spot. Now we had pink eye, purple hull peas planted here. Good morning, y'all. Good morning, guys. Hey, girls. How y'all doing this morning? Hmm? And my main man, Cheese. Cheese is the guard goose that hangs out over here with the flock. He thinks he is, or he is, he is a part of this flock. And so since he is a part of this flock, he protects it. He does a good job with aerial predators. That's the main reason we got cheese over here is because of aerial predators. And to keep the other predators out, you can see we had this electric poultry netting that goes all the way around this spot. You will probably see them a few times throughout this video, but we also have three livestock guardian dogs, two are rescues. And that is Bandit and Rocky. And then we have Miss Foxy, who is an older lady. She's been with us a good little while. Bandit and, Bandit and Rocky are pretty young. They'll be actually, y'all believe it or not, they'll be two years old this year. Now, Holly is not a livestock guardian dog. She's actually an Australian shepherd. And she's just my best friend. You know, she's my company. She does try to help me herd stuff. She's not trained and well, she does try her best, and she does help out a lot. Yeah, don't you, girl? Yeah, you do. But more so, she's my shadow and keeps me company here on the farm. So we feed our chickens laying feed, which is in this big red feeder over here right behind me. It holds 50 pounds. But as a treat, which they absolutely love, I throw these guys out some scratch. I know. I know. Let's get some scratch this morning. Y'all come on, get you a little bit of scratch. Y'all come on. Everybody loves the scratch. Yeah. All right, ladies, let's see how many eggs we've laid today. So we do collect eggs every day, and the eggs are not just for us. They're also for the community. We have a little farm stand out front that we put our eggs in every day, and we're actually increasing our flock. We got some new guys in here that Brooke just recently let out, and that is the Rhode Island Reds. They're pullets now, and pullet is like a juvenile chick or chicken. So they're not ready to lay yet, but they should be ready to lay come spring. And we'll show you some more chickens or chicks that we have in the barn that we're also getting ready to uh, help us with our egg production as well. All right, girls, let's see what we got. All right, not too bad. We got 20 eggs this morning. I hear it's fall. Some of the girls are molting. We will, we will keep all of our chickens forever. We don't cull any or anything like that if they quit laying. We sure do appreciate y'all. Yeah, we sure do appreciate y'all. All right, y'all got the eggs gathered. I'm gonna take them to the barn over here. And then me and Brooke are gonna take care of what's going on over there in the barn. Your babies is waiting on you, aren't they? <laughs> Good morning, Biscuit. All right, Brooke. What you got first thing this morning? You hear that? I hear them. They let me know that they come before peaches now. Yeah. And so that's what I do. And um, that's the baby goats. That's the baby goats. We have five baby goats. They're not so babies anymore. You're going to see when I get over there. But they do need to still eat. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to get our goat feed out of our barrel that is labeled goat. And we do that with all of our feed so we can keep up with who's who, and if we have somebody that's coming to feed for us, there won't be any mix up and no misunderstanding as to who gets what feed. Right, Biscuit? Good morning, Biscuit. Hey, girl. <laughs> All right, so this is where the, um, if there is a complication in our feeding process, yeah. this would have to be it. And the reason being is I wanna make sure that the babies are fed an ample amount of feed. I don't want Capri, who is the mama, who is actually in milk, but her babies have still been stealing a little bit of her milk. I actually had to stop the milking process because one morning after putting the babies back with her, she has two does, the black and white ones, 
her udder was almost completely empty. And that was a surprise to me because I had previously been milking her, not thinking the babies would go back to, yeah, yeah, to the milk. <laughs> but they did. So separating them is something that I do. I feed Capri separately and make sure that she gets what she needs and the babies get what they need. So it's a little tricky. I have to make Capri think that she's gonna come out as well. And then when the babies get out, bye bye y'all. Ah. Shut the door. Slick. Babies first. All right, babies. See, they're not so babies anymore. No, they're, they, uh, they, they're growing up on us. They're getting big and. They don't stay babies long, no, do they? No, they don't. But I do want them to get a full diet of starter, which has all the vitamins and minerals that they need and no other goat competition taking that away from them. Right. Mama's okay receiving this food too. So I'm gonna top, top them off and I don't give Capri a lot of grain because I really wanna dry her up. And one of the steps that I'm taking to do so is just giving her very little grain. She can have all the green grass and all the hay that she wants, but grain is limited. All right, let's go back in and give Capri her feed before we go feed the rest of the farm. Hey, baby. Yeah, good morning. Okay, come here. And that's about all I'm gonna give her. Just enough to make her satisfied. Next goat, I have used this for a learning experience. Next dough that we have in milk, I will not add the babies back. I thought I was doing a good thing and um, live and learn. You so, actually thought they were big enough. Well, I thought they, they were, were too big, big to nurse. Milk, yeah. <laughs> and I'd been milking her for a couple of months and put them back together, and lo and behold, they stole all the milk. And that's just, uh, that's just part of farming as you learn as you go. So this sweet lady, she will be reunited with her babies once they finish eating, and she gets to enjoy a little time alone. Right, girl? That's right. Oh, oh. what was that? <laughs> Let's go see. Good morning, Snow White. Yay! She learned to say good morning a couple of weeks ago. Come here, sweetie. <laughs> Come here. So Snow White, she has uh, laying pellets, and I like to put her a little bit of scratch on the top, just so she knows she's extra special. And mix it around. And she enjoys that. So while we're over here, I'm gonna go ahead and open this door. So she can have access to sunshine. That's right. Those that don't know, Snow White is our rescue pea hen, female peacock or female pea fowl. She's completely blind in one eye and cannot fly very well at all. And so for her safety and her getting comfortable here on the farm, because she is our newest farm animal, we got her here in the barn in these two big stalls. And she has access to this big stall outside right here as well. And so far it's going great. So our future plans with her is to get her a buddy that will get along with her and vice versa. And that'll probably be this spring. But in the meantime, she can hang out with the goats and the emus and the chickens over here. All right, we got the pea, pea hen taken care of and I see Capri has finished eating. Let's go check on the babies and make sure they're finished before everybody's reunited. Are y'all finished? Let's see. Oh, yeah. They're done? There's just a little bit left, and it'll be fine for Mama to come and, and rejoin her babies, who are Martha on that side and Mabel on this side. And then these three have a different Mama who's in another pasture. And pretty soon we're going to put everybody together as soon as we get everybody fed this morning. Next up is our pot belly pig, Peaches. Now, Peaches is... I think the oldest animal that we have on our farm. I think so too. But 
she's she's in no way slowing down. I mean, she's the boss lady of the farm and she keeps everything in check. But we gotta get her fed so she will be a happy pig. Now, Peaches, she's a little bit different than what you would think of a normal pig. She, um, her food is measured out. We do use a feed that is specifically designed for many pigs. And we use just a solo cup to measure her food out and a little bit of mineral oil to her feed. Let's get that on. Plus, Peaches has a special surprise. That is a chewable children's vitamin. Now, this was suggested by our vet, and like I said, Peaches hasn't had any issues since we've been doing these things for her. But we're not going to stop there. Off to the milk room where we're going to wet her food. I let the water warm up just a little bit because it enables the food to soften a little bit faster. Not hot, but just warm. And then we make sure we get it nice and covered. And we're going to take this back out and let it sit while we go feed another animal. So I let Peach's food sit right there. There's no way she's going to jump that fence and get it before I get back. I can guarantee you that. But the next animals that we feed are cows. And we have two pet cows. Just wait till you see them. One of them isn't your ordinary cow. He's actually a giant cow. <laughs> All right, so here we are. We have Mildred, who is a Charlay mix. She was a rescue. She's been with us a couple of years now. And then here's the giant I was referring to, Moody, who is a Holstein steer. Moody was a rescue as well. Um, he is one of those that just grows and grows and grows. And here he is as a giant steer. All right, boys and girls. Get y'all fed. Come here, Moody. We recently uh, did the formula where you measure and it tells you the weight of a cow or cattle. And Mildred was about 18, 1900 pounds. That's right. Moody was right at 3000. So yeah, he's huge. He is about six foot one or two at his top up there. He's a big fella, but is super super sweet he is a gentle giant we love him to death as well as we love mildred to death too mildred is also just such a sweet baby they're both just big huge teddy bears for the most part the only thing is is that mildred is 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 big but moody is massive so we have to be a little cautious when we're around moody uh because he he likes to sling his head or he's actually just playing but since his size, we have to be really cautious around him because even though he is super sweet and he's playing, it doesn't take much for a 3,000 pound steer to, to do some damage on accident. All right, Peach's food should be ready. I bet she's ready too. Yeah, <laughs> I bet she is. All right, girl, it's time for your breakfast. Oh yeah, it's just perfect, isn't it? She, she looks forward to her breakfast. So on the other side of this door is the rest of our goat herd and they do not get fed in the morning and I'll show y'all why. Good morning, everybody. We have Mr. Topper over here, who's a Nigerian dwarf buck. He's um he's getting on up in age, but he's the sweetest little fella. He just loves his rubs, and oh, we're so happy he's here on the farm with us. Right, buddy? It's time to get up. <laughs> All right, Bootsy. 
Bootsy's a Nigerian dwarf. Tip's a Nigerian dwarf. Bo Peep's a Nigerian dwarf. And then we have Paris. She is a Nubian. That's her mama, Fifi, who's a Nubian as well. And it's time to let y'all out. So you can see that this is a stall that we put them up in at night. And there's a reason for that because we want them to be safe. We feel like if they're out here roaming in this big pasture, even though they have the donkeys, honey, don't know where Jessie is, she's coming. Um, it, could be, it could be a safety issue. So every night we give them feed and they come in the stall and we close this door for their safety. Right, Jessie? You could take care of them, couldn't you, girl? There's no need to put them up, but we just do that for their safety. And these girls, Honey and Jesse, they stay out at night because donkeys are known to be guard animals. We've never seen anything strange in the pasture the next morning, and I'm sure that they are part of the reason why. So now we get to go and open our pasture up so everybody can be together. Right, honey? Yeah, that's right. So this door stays open at night, so if the donkeys want to come in here, then they can, but this gate stays closed. When I open this gate, it's going to give access to the other side of the barn where the babies and Capri are being housed for the evening. That's right. You got a little lipstick on you, girl. Yeah. She don't mind it. She doesn't mind it. Jesse and Honey are already wanting to go show y'all their other pasture. Everybody's coming. And Honey, she's usually the first one in. She comes around and makes sure that everything's okay over here and leads the way to the other part of the pasture. So they have access to a whole lot of grass, a whole lot of pasture, um, a whole lot of everything that they could want. Isn't that right, babies? Yes. And everybody gets along. Um, everybody's just feels to be one big happy family. And we're so happy. Yeah. Nothing like goat kisses in the morning. Come on. Come on, babies. Oh, look who's coming. Good morning, Bramble. We gotta get y'all fed too, don't we? Come here. There you go. All right. So we do have three barn cats here. We got Bramble, Sylvester, and Biscuit. And we have two more farm cats, Pink and Tucker. Uh, we got them because of rodents. They do an amazing job at keeping the rodents at bay here in the barn because we got a lot of feed over here. There's a lot of places that rodents can hide, but since they're here, zero. We have no rodents whatsoever with the cats here. We have one last thing to take care of before we leave the barn. And that is our chicks. We have uh, two different set, sets of chicks that are in this brooder. The ones on the top are in a grow out area. They're a good bit bigger than the ones on the bottom. So in order to keep things easy for them, we do keep them separated. These girls are still on a little bit of heat as chicks do require heat as they, as they grow until they're fully feathered and can do without. So while the ones on the top are big enough, they're fully feathered, they're almost ready to go outside. We are still taking care of a set with the heat on them on the bottom. All right. The geese are no different. Their feed is labeled as well as the emus. And I don't get to tell them good morning because they tell me good morning. You ready to eat? Now geese, they can live off of grass alone. But once again, we want to 
be able to see every single one of them, make sure everybody's healthy. And so we supplement feed with laying pellets. Now our emus, they've just joined and their food is in the barrel that's right next to them, specifically designed for emus. However, it doesn't hurt if they get a few laying pellets or a lot of laying pellets. Good morning, Nugget. You can see their feeder's high enough where the geese can't get to it. All right. There y'all go. And they take turns. They take turns. How nice. Yeah, it's okay if the emus were to eat the laying pellets. But, it's, uh, I mean, if some falls, it's fine. But the geese were to have, we don't want them to have a lot of the emu feed. That's right. And you can see everybody gets along on the farm. There's no drama, and we're thankful for that. All right, Big Daddy, Mr. Nugget, got all the farm chores done this morning, sir. Yep, think me and Mama can go inside and go have us some breakfast. Okay? I think you done enjoyed your breakfast, haven't you? I believe so. I believe you have. Yes, sir. If you did enjoy today's video, be sure to hit the like button. Let us know down below how much you enjoyed it. And hit the subscribe button. Cost you absolutely nothing. And that way YouTube knows that you want to follow us. And then they will show you more of our videos. But in the meantime, y'all have the best day ever. And tell them, Nugget, y'all be good. Yeah.